ないんですね反発でなんかっていうのはまずありえはないんですけれどもまあ結局その若いまあ助監督さんが集まってまあ入社したわけですからねで結局その目標っていうのは立てるわけですよねそうするとやっぱり松竹ではあの小津さんというのが大黒柱としていたいますからねじゃあ小津映画にまあ挑戦するようなものを我々は作らなきゃいけないんじゃないかというような酒飲みの上の話ではねたびたび出てました。Japanese New Wave was born in Japan during the early 1960s while the country was engulfed in a wave of political discontent and protest over the ratification of the United States Japan Security Treaty, or AMPO for short. The public felt the treaty would lead Japan down another path of destruction while the scars of World War II were still fresh. The people protested, America was vilified, and the Japanese government was brought to a stalemate. Things became so chaotic that the Japanese Socialist Party tried to form a human blockade to stop other parliamentarians from entering the Diet to vote. When the politicians got in, the speaker was dragged to his chair, and the treaty was passed. In the midst of all this, Japan's studio system was collapsing and on the verge of bankruptcy. Studios such as Shochiku and Akatsu needed something new to save themselves from oblivion, so they gave their young first assistant directors, such as Nagisa Oshima and Seijun Suzuki, the opportunity to direct their own films. This, combined with the upheaval in the country, led to a cinematic explosion which changed the definitions of Japanese cinema entirely. The new wave believed the older films of their forefathers no longer reflected what it meant to live in Japan and be Japanese at that very point in time. Oshima, the most overtly political of them all, took direct aim at the establishment with films such as Death by Hanging and Night and Fog in Japan. Death by Hanging focused on the racist and absurdist underpinnings of Japanese culture, challenging Japanese views on the death penalty, the absurdism of capital punishment, and the very real racism towards Koreans which existed in Japan. Night and Fog in Japan took a hard, pessimistic look at the possibility of reconciliation amongst the left in Japan after 12 years of political protesting. Oshima was sympathetic to the left's cause, but paints a dour depiction of their ability to forgive each other and move on. Seijun Suzuki steered clear of politics for the most part, focusing instead on the corrupt, violent, and abrasive nature of Japan's underbelly. His visual aesthetics made his films pop like old Technicolor musicals, and his drama was distilled to its base essentials. His films were pure entertainment, but entertainment that challenged the notions of what a Japanese film could or should be. So you may ask, what was the Japanese New Wave? It was a film movement in Japan that was spawned by the studio system, but grew into an independent beast. New independent studios such as the Art Theatre Guild gave a home for this new breed of Japanese filmmaker and their films. There was no unifying visual motif or theme which ran through all the films. They ranged from shorts to documentaries and everything else in between. Japanese New Wave was a unified scream which was horrified by the past and furious about the future. Ultimately, Japanese New Wave was a giant fuck you to everything else that had come before. Thank you for watching. いつか忘れた東京の泣いてくれるな夜の雨音